Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Feng Shui Talks with myself Jess Neary of Jess Neary Feng Shui. And here on Feng Shui Talks every one to two weeks I'm meeting up with experts on shifting the energy in our home, um, in our life, and bringing more awareness and intentionality into those areas. Today, I am joined with a very special guest, and she'll be popping on here in a moment. Her name is Angela Wooden. I've known her for a few years now and have been going to her for some home goods. Um, you may see some photos or have seen me in the past wearing this beautiful green olive toque. It was custom made from Angela, and I'm always so excited to wear it, and, and I just adore Angela so much. Oh, there she is. Perfect. So she's about to jump on and we're going to talk all about intentional crafting. Oh, perfect. We got her. All about intentional crafting, looking at sustainability um, when we're bringing items into our home and also talking a lot about home goods, homemade goods. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. You can hear me okay, can you? I can hear you perfectly. And okay. I was just kind of giving a little bit of an introduction to what we're going to be talking about today. And I know that we've, we've already outlined that we're going to talk about intentional crafting, sustainability, and looking at homemade goods as well. And I did a little post this morning about the difference between homemade goods and machine-made goods. So I'm really excited to talk more about that with you today. Yeah, yeah. I seen your <laughs> post. That was that was really nice. Yeah. It's like a little tiptoe into it because um I know a few years ago for myself it was this I was going through some really big changes in my life and certainly around this time of the year as well and looking at bringing more love, joy in 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 that into my home and into our lives of, of course as well and knowing that our home space is a reflection of who we are and where we're at on our journey. Um, I began making some changes. So had many more man made or <laughs> machine made <laughs> <laughs> items in our home and, um, and really bringing those items in at the time, it just wasn't in alignment with where I was going in my life. So um I'd love if you wanted to give a little brief introduction to yourself and, and what you do, and then we can get right into the talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate talking about myself, Jess. Oh, my soul. I'm Angela. Um, Angela's Stitches is my textile business, and I've recently switched over to my Eclectic Herbals account to take it over as a stitched homestead, and I'm excited to see where I'm well, to share, I, I have an idea, I can see where I'm going, but to share where this part of this adventure is going. But yeah, so anything handmade, I love it. Absolutely. Love it. And now you garden. Um, for those who are watching, like I know quite a bit more about you than someone that is just in being introduced to you for the first time. And what really drew me to you was the the whole energy behind growing your own garden, um, using materials in your crafting that is ethically sourced, um, certainly locally support uh, sourced, um, and looking at reducing the environmental footprint. Um, so I'd love to get a little bit more into like maybe our first topic of intentional crafting and what that means to you. Yeah, yeah, that's my goal. Um, yeah. All along, I guess, I've been using, you know, fibers from, I don't really call it fiber, it's yarn, it's string, it's threads, it's not really man-made. Um, I've been using that, and this year, this past year, I guess, now we're into the new year, really had me thinking about where I really want to go. Like, mm -hmm. I hate, I really hate, yeah. such a strong word, but I do, I really dislike using acrylics right I, I just I don't like it and why I use it it's easy I guess is why I did use it and this past year had me really thinking about and connecting with 
I had no idea how many like shepherds we had around here just who don't utilize their wool because they grow from meat. So wool is not their number one. So I've connected with them and I'm excited to work with them this year. Um, But even out West, I've found so many just Canadian growers. So I've made it my mission to totally eliminate man-made fibers as much as I can. Right. And just work with sustainable. And this year in my gardens, I'm hoping to grow. Well, not hoping to. I plan to grow um, my own dyeing colors. So I've got some flowers ordered to, well, seeds to plant for. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. That is so exciting. I, I, years ago, um, I actually, when I first began my consulting practice at the same time, so five years ago, um, I was making macrame plant hangers and absolutely loved working with my hands. Um, but it was really important to me that I was using materials and items that were as natural as possible. Cause I knew by this hanger being in someone's home was going to be a really strong statement. And, um, also kind of uh, bring a different energy into their space as well. And so using materials like natural wood, of course, um, for the shelf, if it had one, using cotton rope instead of nylon, you know, choosing Mm. different alternatives that would be um, more environmentally friendly and in the long run. And dyeing (laughs) the, the macrame cord with natural dyes was kind of like the next process or like the next step in my evolution in that that world so I'm absolutely fascinated by the natural dyes yeah I'm excited to get started with that I don't know we'll see how well I do (laughs) have what are you planning Uh, the garden like to to have for the natural dyes would it be something like beets um I know yeah, I- anything and everything that I can use. Yeah. Yarrow, um, mm-hmm. yarrow, uh, woad, woad, woad. I don't really know how you say it properly, but it's <laughs> blue. It's like indigo. Oh, um, oh, cool. Yellow. Oh, what did I get? It's a chamomile. It's a type of chamomile. Dyer's chamomile or something like that. So I'm going to try that. Yeah. Um, different barks. Cedar will give you yellow, I guess. So I'm just, I think I'm going to just wing it a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I just hope I don't ruin anything. <laughs> <laughs> Test it on like uh, little scraps or something. Little first. scraps. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Um, and I've heard about using, is it avocado pits and their skins as well? Yeah. What color yeah. does that create? Do you, do you remember? Like pink. Pink. Like a pink color. Pink. Yeah. Was well, different, different shape of pink. That is so cool. I think that's like, um, I love the direction that it's like this interest is kind of going in. I see like local. So for those that are tuning in, we are in the East Coast of Canada. Um, we're in Hampton, Norton, New Brunswick. And so when we talk about local, we're talking kind of about um, our community locally here in, in location. But um, what I'm noticing is other crafters or vendors as well that are kind of having their focus be more towards uh, natural plant-based dyes, um, of course, using materials that's environmentally friendly. um, And then, of course, the sourcing of these materials as well is so important. So it's something that I see is becoming like a trend. And I Maybe not a trend is the right word to use, but more of a focus. Movement, and, maybe. And more yeah. um, time. In- My internet's oh. cutting out. Oh, no. Angela, are you still there? <laughs> I am. That's okay. That's My totally internet. okay. <laughs> My husband come home, so I think he's going to eat up a bunch of my internet now. <laughs> Blame it on him. That's all right. <laughs> um, now what I can't. I'd have to run and go get his attention. Intention that you have. Okay. Yeah. I know. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, if you're still here, I'd love to learn more about the intention that you have behind your crafts too. Intention. He's coming in. I need to tell him to turn his internet off his phone because he's <laughs> eating all the internet. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> sure. So for for those that may be jumping on, um, we're talking all about intentional crafting, sustainability, and also looking at homemade goods versus machine made goods and the difference and uh, talking a lot about bringing that intention into our home space, but also it's through all those items that we bring in that's going to fuel that intention that we have for our space and for our home. There, I hope that'll work. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome back, yeah. Rural internet is yeah, so, so awesome. <laughs> It's really, I think uh, where you live is so beautiful because you're in a way disconnected from like Wi-Fi and a lot, a lot of that um, electricity or electrical output. And you get to have that uh, solitude like out in gardening and it's a little more quiet out in the country. But then of course, when we're connecting in a virtual platform, it's just, it just comes with it, right? It, oh yeah yeah this is awful um last year working off when everybody was home like you could tell who how many of us in the area or and even after school when the kids get home when everybody was going to school every day four o'clock comes there's like the internet would just slow down or it'd be just cut out so bad it's awful right <laughs> <laughs> and even in the house, when we're all connected to it and trying to do videos, we can't. It's like who's 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 watching what? We got to turn it. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> oh well. One way to keep you off of it, though, I guess. Yeah, that's true too. You manage the the capacity there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was curious to know what your intentions were behind your crafting intentions how, how do you mean <laughs> like intentions mm. how so <laughs> um well and we can even um, another way to kind of approach things is um why do you think that, um, or why is it so important to you, I guess would be a better way to put it, um, to use like locally sourced items um, or materials, I guess, for your crafting? Um, it just connect, just, just having it natural, just the connection, just the being, being natural yeah just having sorry there's <laughs> other things going on i get distracted so easily it's awful um the intention behind my work just moving towards so i garden as everybody knows and herbalism too is another part of it so it doesn't align when you're using man-made fibers it just doesn't i guess like i said before it just doesn't sit well so using yarn that's made from wool or alpaca hemp linen flax cotton silk just things that are sustainably sustainably sourced and made and looked after is brings more meaning mm -hmm. behind into yeah. what i'm making you know what i mean like it's yeah i absolutely more. yeah i absolutely know what you mean yeah, yeah, it feels, um, I know for, for myself, it feels good. Like it feels more, and I think yeah. I use the perfect word that I find. Yeah, and a lot of times I look at it as um, an alignment too, to like what we're feeling kind of in our heart, but also in our gut too, you know, what's feeling the most um connected to who we are and what we're here to share with the world. So 
And I think that's definitely why I've connected with yourself and continue to is because I see that you have this really strong, positive intention behind everything that you've done. So or do. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And moving towards, yeah, just 100% natural. And it's, I don't mm. know. I keep thinking, am I doing, is it going to be hard? But it's not. And when we, I, I wrote this down here, I've got notes or I'm going to be like, but anyway, um, when we engage Perfect. in our craft in a meaningful way that brings comfort to our soul and joy in our lives, and that's when the magic happens. And if we in a way that's like that, you're going to feel that, I think. Like you're going to know if we're not enjoying what we're, the materials we're working with, the textures that we're creating, the colors, all of that you're going to feel that you're going to know when you pick it up or even when you look at it, you're going to know this is not, this wasn't intentionally crafted or they are not enjoying what they're making. Like they're really not. And I think those who you see who succeed well in the handmade handcrafted industry industry, I guess we'll call it. Um, the ones mm -hmm. that succeed are the ones who true, like, you know what I mean? Like you can feel yep. them in it. Yeah. Like when you purchase a piece and it arrives in the mail and you open it up and it's just automatic, like whew, you can, <laughs> you can almost like feel them right there because they've put yeah. themselves and there is, there's a piece of me in everything that I make wow. and you take that into your home. Right. So yeah, whether I'm, yeah. whether we're making for your something for you to wear or something for you to like tables or chairs or anything like that that's crafted jewelry you wear you carry that energy with you yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> those are the ones that you got the other day oh is gosh. it I love that you say that because on the week I had just gotten a pair of these ones I got the other day oh, that's so funny. I messaged Chris yes Krista from um, All the Pretties. And well, I yeah. said, yeah, I opened the box and there were two pairs of earrings, one for myself and one for my daughter. And I opened the box and I almost started crying. It was just like this outpour of love. And I made sure to send a really special like thank you because I think it, um, it is so wonderful when you're able to connect with others who are so passionate about what they do and right and they put their heart into their crafting so yeah. I I was before you had come on I was talking a little bit about the toque that I had gotten from yourself as well that um, I had asked to have custom made and I'm wearing it almost almost every day not every day I'm outside oh are you that. <laughs> yeah and it just oh, awesome. it fits perfect it just feels so good um, and, and this is it too, is when you're working with crafters like yourself, you're able to, I mean, be involved, I guess, in the creation of it as well. And I, I find that to be such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And even if that's just, you know, literally going to a store and finding a piece that you've made as well, it's like, um, yeah, it feels like there's this connection there, which is really nice. There, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and your hat, it will soften up over time. And that's the thing that I love about wool is it, and I pre-wash everything before it leaves the house, but um, over time it will soften up and work in and fill in and it's made to last. And if it gets a little snag in it, mend it, wear it, pass it on. And that's another thing about handmade items too, is they're made to last. They're made to be passed on and sent down the line and not and repaired not oh it's broke let's toss it away that's right which is all part of the yeah. sustainability yeah, of it too big so part of yeah. absolutely i think that's a perfect natural segue right into sustainability because um, again, like when we choose to bring things into our home, whether it's, you know, a piece of decor, whether it's um, 
your mug, whether it's, you know, even the pen you use, I mean, whatever it is that you're bringing into your home, being very mindful and conscious of those decisions is so important. Mm. Um, now, sustainability is a big part of what fuels my decisions um, as well. So the whole reason and intention behind me connecting with you to um, have a two cousin like created is because I was tired of just finding the trendy on sale hat while waiting in line, you know, buying some clothes, just, you know, to find out that weeks later, it's falling apart. Or, you know, after one year of use, it's just, you can't really wear it because it wasn't made to be worn more than maybe a handful of times. You know, we exactly. Have this- we live in a world of fast fashion, fast, fast fashion for the convenience. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, we do. We do. I don't know if you can hear. Go to a local business and vendor and keep our <laughs> economy floating, or we can choose to shop at big box stores, of course. Uh, in today's post that I had made, um, there are benefits of, you know, pros and cons to either choice. Um, but being aware that there is this choice and making a decision with this newfound awareness is going to be really empowering, very supportive, and puts you in that driver's seat. So thank you so much. I unfortunately, Angela had to pop off. Um, oh, she's back on. Oh, perfect. Angela. We can bring Angela back on before before we sign out. That would be fantastic. As I was mentioning, we're both <laughs> from that country, so connection is maybe a little sometimes too. But that's totally cool. Oh, hey, you're that back! Was bad. Yay! <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I was just saying. I was just uh, saying too. We're we're at the end of Mercury retrograde, and I'm not sure if you follow astrology a whole lot, but uh now in mercury's direct however we're still in the shadow effects of it so i mean eh, technical glitches it's just part of <laughs> part of being in a virtual community part of <laughs> yeah i could hear a little bit to you and it was just i was just it paused and then i could hear you a little bit and i was like no what's going on <laughs> huh. i was just hoping oh, that i was dear. kept going i wasn't sure <laughs> what what is seen or, or viewed from the other the other side of the the screen but that's that's totally cool um, um i love we talk about sustainability we talked about intentional crafting um i know we really want to talk about handmade goods and we've we've totally been covering bits and pieces of that is there anything else you'd like to add when it comes to including homemade goods in our home um, versus maybe machine-made goods. Homemade's oh, it's better. It's always better. It's always, <laughs> I say that, that's a bias. That's so biased, right? <laughs> Everything has its place. It's like but, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of it is if you, it comes down to really knowing your source, I think. Um, whether you're a maker, yeah. consumer, I think um, in the world of fast fashion and fast making, I think it comes down to really looking into where you're purchasing from and especially if it's a big box store and really kind of knowing where they're sourcing from, where their plants are, where their mills are, where are they working, what are they doing to the environment, where they are and not just what they're doing in a sense that's bad, but what are they doing to help, to help. 
because once you get into looking yeah. into um, a fashion, I guess, is more mm. what I pay attention to because that's more the my skill sets more geared towards handmade wearable items. So um, once you get into looking to where your fiber is made, where your main fibers are made and the dyeing processes and stuff like that, it's bad. It's yeah. really bad. Like it is not good. <laughs> it's just not. And yeah. once you get into paying attention to where all of that comes from, the runoff, what is deemed okay and safe for everybody who lives wherever it's I'm not just gonna pick one place and because it's just I could say but I'm just not gonna be like this place or that place but anyways once you get into looking into that yeah and really see mm. what goes into yeah. making With your clothes in, of, of, of the, yeah. yeah yeah and um there's a few big companies that are supposed to be transparent and they say they're helping. But once you get into looking, they're not as awesome as they say they are. It's just for what? So it's still allowed. It's, it's sad, but yeah. And for handmade is like, it's local. And when you're supporting local, you're supporting, you really are supporting local. Like when you buy from me, the money goes to me, to my family. And, you know, it helps pay bills, helps feed us. And most of what I buy for groceries still is local. Like I'm still supporting local growers, local butchers, local. It's still local as much as I can. So I think that's the big thing is you get the circle and you're just in that and it just goes round and round. And that's, I think the handmade community is really, that's where it's at. I think that's, mm. I think yeah. that's where we're moving to. And I think this last year has really shown us that we need that and fast just isn't sustainable. So, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like with, <laughs> with respect to being a parent, um, I know we're both mothers as well. And I mean, when I became a mother, my whole world kind of, well, not my entire world, but a big part of it flipped upside down because I was thinking, well, what kind of a legacy am I creating for my children? I mean, of course, I know that my influence is much greater than our children. However, I think that is so important for the next generation to be aware of the transparencies and being aware of what they value or what is a value system that we are aligned with. And, and I was mentioning that too a moment ago when you were popped off that you know, our dollar is extremely valuable. And, you know, you hear the term used in the past or the phrase that, you know, our dollar is the vote. And a lot of times, you know, in a political system, we may not feel like we're heard um, or, or supported maybe in certain ways. But when we're buying and choosing to consciously bring in items to our space that's benefiting our community, um, a local business like you like them it it just you're fueling and um bring that prosperity into the community it's not just about retrieving an item into your home and having it yeah it's, it's so much more than that. so much more than that yeah it is yeah it really really is and you feel that everybody feels mm -hmm. that yeah I had a question actually from a client um, when we were looking at materials for certain items that we wanted to bring into her, her, her space. And she had asked the question, well, should I go plastic or should I go natural material? And it was so beautiful because in that moment I said, what do you think? What feels good to you? <laughs> it was very obvious, um, very obvious yeah. what felt best for her. And so we were we work through that but you know when we're creating our space and when we're creating our home when we're creating a life essentially it's all about looking at what feels aligned what feels good 
um, to yourself, not what's being told to you, mm -hmm. of course, but deep down, like what feels right to you, <laughs> what feels right. aligned and, and trust that and going with that and seeing the value in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cause everywhere as we go, it's, yeah. it's the advertisements, everything is like, boom, yeah. boom, boom, buy it now and throw it out later and buy new and buy bigger and buy better. And you can't, where's that get us, right? So <laughs> yes. again, bringing the sustainability is like, where, how is that sustainable? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So short term and long term. Very, yeah, absolutely. I mean, our dollar goes a far or can go a very far way. And especially when we bring our intention into where we're choosing to place our dollar, um, super, super important at creating that sustainability, uh, even for our own personal energy, you know, in our home, if we're constantly surrounded by plastic things, which, you know, I, to be fair, I mean, there's a lot of plastic from where I'm sitting. Um, there's also a lot of items too that aren't plastic um, and that are yeah. bigger items that kind of, I was able to make those conscious decisions to bring in more of that um, aligned choices, if you will. So yeah, and it's just going to be about, in our house. <laughs> oh, it's going to be balanced too, because we're not in a society where we can just drop all the mm -hmm. plastic and, you know, True. away we go yeah. to using coconut bowls or whatever, like that's, or bamboo, like right. <laughs> that's just what comes to mind, but and we, we I can't just, there. I'm trying to find cutlery. <laughs> sustainable it just i haven't seen it yet I'm just waiting waiting for the bamboo plates for the kids <laughs> yeah what did i see somebody was making uh cutlery out of avocado pits is that right i think oh, i'll just see if i can find that again and i'll send it to you but i'm pretty sure yeah, that's what we've seen and i thought that is the coolest thing ever i don't know how long they last but who knows i don't know we're in such an innovated, an innovative time too. Like for those who are watching, who maybe have ideas of ways to really start a business that is more aligned to themselves, aligned to that sustainability and providing services to those. I mean, there's this huge. I mean, as an entrepreneur and as a business student myself, there's this huge gap. So we're just like waiting for somebody to jump in and. And, and go with it and really do well. And no to anything. Yeah, and no to anything is ever the same. I think we can get stuck in the, yeah. oh, he's already making that or she's already doing that. Yes, they are, but not how you will do it. Like, absolutely. there's just yes. not. And there's so much that, like, we can upcycle, we can downcycle, recycle, we can you know, connect with your local, mm -hmm. Bobby. anybody, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing about wool, like your wool hat, when it gets to end of life, mm -hmm. well, even that wooden tag, you can, you know, take it out back, and put it in the garden, and it will decompose, so I mean, at the end of life cycle of natural awesome. made items, yeah. oh, I love that, or take the apart, idea for me, yeah, absolutely. I think that's so great to know and think of as well, especially um, like within the week, we're going to be going into full moon energy, which is all about letting go. A big part of that is decluttering. And this is where it's interesting because when we're looking at clearing clutter from our homes and our lives, oftentimes those plastic items we look at and we're like, what do we do with these? I don't want to put it in the garbage and just have it sitting in a landfill somewhere for eternity because it just doesn't yeah. decompose. Yeah. So that is a huge, huge part also in the whole decision behind what is coming into our home where we choose to spend our, our money and, and time and energy really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming on Angela. It was so great. And I'm glad too, that it worked out in the end. I'm grateful to uh, <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's awful. Oh, my.
Oh, oh well. It's always so great to connect with you. Honestly, every time I leave either your house or a call or a message, I always feel so light and um, so. Oh, thank uh, you. Connected. Yeah, I feel really good knowing that you've got, you know, a lot of checks in place with what you're doing. And so when I go to you to purchase something, then I know that I'm taken care of. So, and that is a really important part for myself too. So. Oh, well, thank you. You see, and that's nice to hear because that means that tells me that I'm, I'm doing something right. Obviously, I must be. If I'm getting this feedback. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and I know too that your work is being recognized too in, in our community, but in a large scale as well with the new NB box. So this is great. And I think that it's such an important conversation to have um, to really share this information because there are so many people out there that are looking for more sustainable options mm. and um, so you need to know who to go to. <laughs> and there's, yeah, yeah. And I hope to, um, in the coming months, compile a list of locals who make, create, cook and yeah and put that together and have that on my website so that people can connect locally because I had a conversation recently with somebody and she said please it'd be nice to know who's like really local and I was listing off yeah. a bunch of people and she was like really I was like yeah there's like if you don't look for it you don't know you know so yeah our markets are a great place to connect but that's right. not everybody can get to a market so and I mean and that's great but I think, yeah, I think the circular living, I think we need to, we need to know more who's in our community. Yeah, to support, but. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, giving a voice really to these artisans and crafters that are creating such beautiful pieces. Yeah, I, yeah. and I absolutely adore the website as well. So I think that would be like the perfect place. <laughs> I know for me to go there and be like, I know where to go. A stitched homestead yeah. or ampl.ca and, and I, I can, again, be taken care of. And yeah, I think, again, there's that demand and the desire from a lot, these, like a lot of individuals who are kind of picking up that, you know, they want to make a change and, and put their dollar into places that's, uh, again, sustainable. Yeah. It's a, a great investment. It's a huge investment in ourselves, but in the community. I still, like, I stress that so much because, um, again, it's just keeping, keeping everything local and supporting our whole community as we all kind of rise up and, and succeed. So it's, it's super, yeah. super important. But, yeah. It is. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Jess. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us as well. If you're watching the replay, please give us a love. Um, drop some comments if you have any questions. If anything in the in in this whole conversation really feels good to you and aligns with you, we'd love to hear it. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always contact Angela at a stitched home or myself, Jess at Jess Neri Feng Shui. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.